I think we can start now. Sir, you are ready, no? Bow, bow, you are yes. ready, no? Yeah, I am ready. Yeah, ma'am, you okay. can start. Okay, sir. Namaskar and su swagatam. On behalf of Ratlam Society, I am privileged to extend a hearty welcome to our guest of honor, Dr. Gavita Bapat, madam, a dynamic face of MP in Foxy platform. Let me run fast on her CV. She is mentor to many gynecologists in vaginal surgeries, well known as one day hysterectomy specialist, director of Bapat Hospital Indore. Her center runs ICOG vaginal surgery certificate course. She holds many posts in MP and at Foxy level. To name, she was vice president Foxy 21-22, organizing secretary AICOG 22 at Indore. Dr. Kavita Bhatt, um, Madam is a strong contender for post of Brexit, uh, President Foxy election this year. I wish him, wish her best luck and request all the members to support her. Welcome, Madam. Today's academic illustration is on vaginal surgery made easy by our esteemed guest speakers, Dr. Ashish Kubre, sir, from Nagpur, who will be speaking on NDVH made easy and NDVH in scarred and large uterus. I welcome you, sir. I welcome Dr. Jay Prakash Patil from Raichur, Karnataka. He will be delivering lecture on procedures for apical support, sacrospinous fixation, and high uterosacral fixation, think beyond NDBH. Both of today's speakers have been in Ratlam Society in past also for video demonstration of various techniques for prevention and treatment of TPH and approach to retroperitoneal space. I welcome our own Dr. Sunita Yarde, Madam, to chair the two sessions. She is senior founder member of Ratlam Society. She served as Mayor Ratlam, and she herself is highly skilled laparoscopic and vaginal surgeon with special interest in urogynecology, colposcopy, and cytology. I now welcome all the seniors and colleagues of Ratlam Society, as well members of other societies who have joined us today. I now request our guest of honor, Dr. Kavita Bapat, Madam, for a few words of wisdom, Madam. Thank you. Thank you so much. The Slam Society is another society of the extension of our society of Indore. I'm really telling you. And I have all regards for the Kumari Sunita, Madam, ki liye hai, very regards uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, Ashish. And Jay Prakash just let you know. She's a Mahapur of the city. She was the Mahapur. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, I just heard. It's very nice to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And the best part, she's my husband's batchmate. So you can understand how many regards I can have for her. <laughs> Always. to me. And another, my darling person is Manisha. Uh, just one introduction for Ashish and Jay Prakash for you. She is the daughter of Vice Chancellor of Indore University. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So you can understand how much you <laughs> step You can understand the people are all around there. And this video, Jinke Kule, the name Lefaru. I am finding support there. I am finding Madam Dikri and Mujhe Rajkumari Madam Dikri, Rajesh Dikri, Dr. Rajesh Dikri, and uh, Neha Dikri. But the most important point which I love to talk about the vaginal surgery, see, you two are the expert people and very skillful vaginal surgeons. So Manisha, you did a great job, but they are, they are making a significant difference into the countless women. See, logo ko pata nahi padta hai, the vaginal surgeon are definitely, definitely making yeah. And our approach for the patient care is definitely different and very economic. It's the most cost effective when we do the vaginal surgery. And then all the uh, complex navigate uh, surgical procedures we do, we both of you are yeah. precisely and very, very, uh, what they call it, with a precision and a gracefully youthful You are doing so many things, either doing the shinoids, or doing the ectopic, or removing the fibroid, or doing the vaginal TV, or doing the circlage, or uh, you are doing any so many things are there in the vaginal route which we can do, and we are love to do it. And basically, it's a tireless effort. In a competition with a laparoscopic surgery, you can imagine how much pain and efforts we vaginal surgeons have to take. And you two are really the epitome of the both, everything, and the way the commitment and everything. 
teaching part. The both of them are teaching so well everywhere they go. So they are basically. मेरे को कभी कभी लगते हैं हमारे वैजनल सर्जरी के कमांडेंट्स हैं कमांड कमांडेंट्स हैं आई एम रियली प्राउड बोथ ऑफ यू आई थिंक ऑल द इंफॉर्मेशन मेडिकली एबिलिटी टू कम्युनिकेट पैशन जो है हमारा इसके लिए इट्स रियली रियली ऑसम सो आई थिंक नॉट ओनली द रतलाम सोसाइटी विल बी बेनिफिटेड बाय द लेक्चर्स ऑफ दिस टू बट हूसोएवर हैज जॉइन टुडे बिकॉज़ इट्स अ हार्डकोर आई एम अ वैजनल सर्जन एंड आई लव दिस टू पीपल दिस पीपल विल शो अस द वे दे विल डू इट So thank you so much, Manisha and Neha and Sunita Diri for inviting me. Thank you, everyone. The honor is all ours, ma'am. I think ma'am, the presentation is so, and I'll be there throughout because I like to see and watch their presentations. And thank you so much, Dr. Kavita, thank madam, you. for accepting our invitation and uh, gracing the webinar. I now thank call you. upon wow. Dr. Neha Saraf, Secretary <laughs> Ratlam Society. for further introduction of our guest speakers and further uh, lectures neha yes ma'am firstly i would like to introduce our chairperson dr sunita yadav ma'am ma'am as such needs no introduction and she has been well introduced by our all our members and kavita ma'am herself i welcome sunita <laughs> ma'am to chair the session thank you next we have with us आशीष कुबड़े सर वुड लाइक टू शेयर अ सीन सर इज डायरेक्टर सेवन स्टार हॉस्पिटल नागपुर इज वजाइनल एंड लैपोस्कोपिक सर्जन रोबोटिक एंड गायनल ऑनको सर्जन डेमोन्स्ट्रेटेड वजाइनल हिस्ट्रैक्टमी विद सिस्टमेटिक वॉल्यूम रिडक्शन एट टेंथ स्पैनिश एंडोस्कोपिक कांग्रेस इबीजा इन 2016 थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन sir has been invited as operating faculty in various national conferences demonstrate vaginal surgery and he has been a trainer for various life saving techniques in pbh attached to ngo known as search i welcome you sir it would be an uh, it would be so nice to hear you today thank you neha madam uh, with your permission could i start for sure sir please Yeah. Uh, please check uh, my uh, screen share and my audio. Are I wrong? Okay. At the outset, it's my duty to thank the Ratlam Society. This is the third instance that uh, I am with you uh, in the COVID days. we were busy with the uh, ets cme uh, and that was in two parts then uh, after that we were in the retroperitone anatomy and obstetrician perspective and for the third time we myself and jayprakash are with you and now in this uh, in the context of the vaginal surgery cme uh kavita ma'am जस्ट तुम बैटन आम समोर चलव है यू बिलोंग टू द सेम बिरादरी ऑफ वजैनल सर्जन एंड एज ऑल ऑफ अस नो दैट सी इज द कंटेस्टेंट फॉर द पोस्ट ऑफ फॉक्सी प्रेसिडेंट एंड आई विश ऑल द बेस्ट फॉर हर फ्यूचर एंडेवर ऑल द बेस्ट मैम एंड कमिंग टू द पॉइंट डायरेक्टली दैट आर फर्स्ट Uh, deliberation is vaginal hysterectomy the tips and tricks this is a, a sort of general type of the presentation where what to do and what not to do in the vaginal uh, surgery i bring greetings from the nagpur orange city and this is the zero mile considered to be the geographical center of nagpur uh, for india and this is the holy diksha bhumi and this is my hospital seven star hospital like all other surgeries these are vaginal surgery vaginal hysterectomy it is a team work and this concept of team work rather is more important in this surgery because this surgery is a sort of narrow aperture coaxial surgery what i mean the narrow aperture that you are performing this surgery from the very narrow space of vaginal canal 
where the targeted organ uterus your hand movement and your vision of axis they are all congruent and as this is the narrow aperture therefore what your right and left assistant they are doing it should be in tandem otherwise this surgery yes surgery makes one ko samay nahi lagta therefore it is always a team work and everybody knows the team work divides the task and multiplies the success in all the game एक इंडिविजुअल किसी का परफॉर्मेंस मैटर नहीं करता जो भी होती है वो टीम होती है इन लेप्रोस्कोपिक सर्जरी आल्सो योर टीम ऑफ असिस्टेंट योर टीम ऑफ कैमरा पर्सन यू सी व्हाट योर कैमरा पर्सन टोल्ड यू एंड सेम इज हियर आल्सो इट इज अ टीम वर्क एंड एज पर एज पॉसिबल ट्राई टू कीप योर टीम कॉन्सेंट वॉट एपन वेन यू परफॉर्म दिस सर्जरी इन medical colleges where you are assisting today some resident is assisting tomorrow assistant why resident why is assisting therefore every day the team changes therefore the outcome of the surgery and the course of surgery it always changes similarly the surgery is difficult to teach and it is difficult to learn also because the both the factor that is a narrow aperture surgery and second thing a small difference in any of the things like history or the indication it makes big difference whatever perception you get while sitting on the hot seat nobody no other person can get the same feeling contrary to this vaginal surgery if somebody is performing the lap surgery what surgeon is seeing what anesthetist is seeing what anesthetist assistant is seeing or what the other spectators are seeing they are visualizing the same thing therefore proctoring is somewhat easy in laparoscopic surgery but here it is not the case what surgeon is getting the feel while sitting in the center his or her proctor who is teaching him will not get the same feeling therefore it is difficult to teach and it is simultaneously difficult to learn a small change in any of the indication it will cause the big difference in the outcome consider the history if the uterus of 12 week size with previous three vaginal delivery the same thing the same uterus with previous two cesarean section same 12 week with the fundal myoma or same 12 week with the cervical myoma everywhere the surgery changes the outcome changes therefore there here the concept of leverage that the position of the pivot point if you alter that position of the pivot point by a minute difference it will cause a big difference in the outcome the same is the scenario here as far as when you consider with the abdominal hysterectomy or the lap hysterectomy your surgical approach is altogether different the same structure of the minar when you see from the above downward you will get this aerial view but here the same structure you get this view here or the approach to the anatomy is the bottom up what are structure like the uterus uterosacral these are the last structure you tackle in the open surgery rather you have to tackle you have to do the colpotomy first and followed by the uterosacral in vaginal surgery i will like to mention the special instruments for this surgery which are very important there are many types of retractor like sonawala divas or navratil press ke longer or thin speculum or many of the many types of clamps you can use but as far as sometimes the diverse retractor flat diverse retractor people use but the most important is the simple thin speculum the thin speculum why it is important because consider this diagram it is having the two curvature and when you use the thin speculum consider this is the lower curvature of this uh, moon 
as the upper curvature it corresponds with the curvature of the needle therefore as these both the curvatures are nearly congruent to each other therefore the facilitation of the this this maneuverability of this needle in the depth it always get facilitated because of using the same speculum either you can use the bivalve same speculum or you can use the longer bladed single bladed same speculum this is having the longer blade position matters here position matter everywhere this your daily routine but consider the complex procedures like the surgery this is the modified dennis brown position which you give for the any of these laparoscopic procedures performed in the pelvic area but this procedure this position is not suitable for the vaginal system for vaginal this is the very specific position that buttock should be positioned just over the table's edge the buttock should be outside the edge of the table according to me it should be outside about 2 to 3 inch why this position because this position is bring the fornaces forward how it happens there must be the hyperflexion at the level of the hip hyperflexion at the level of knee with somewhat external rotation of the hip with sir you need to unmute yourself sir you need to unmute yourself ashish bhav you need to unmute yourself you need to unmute yourself okay yeah what is yes yes what happens in this position this is consider a lady sitting in a squatting position for defecation and if you rotate that lady by 90 degree whatever position you get that is the most suitable position for vaginal defecation what happens in this position there occurs the somewhat tilting of the pelvis and because of this tilting of the pelvis the depth of vagina it gets reduced fornices come forward and because of this the uh, surgery becomes quite easy most important thing the tolerance to multiple instruments is less in this surgery therefore you cannot use multiple many instruments already how many instruments are there in the field at present two retractors anti rain posterior two alices to catch hold the cervix char ho gaya fourth one clamp ho gaya sixth one the scissor to cut seventh instrument when you remove the scissor it is being replaced by the needle holder means already you are using the seven instruments in this point therefore there is no more place to accommodate more clamp therefore you have to use the single but very good quality of clamp you cannot use multiple clamps in non decent vaginal area this is very important trick that is the strong traction on cervix with vigorous massage of the uterocecal particularly on the left side for approximately 30 seconds it increases the distance of the cervix by about 2 to 3 cm and this is very important trick by doing this you can convert a absolute non decent hysterectomy to a hysterectomy with some level 1 type of defect and your surgery becomes easy this is a small clip where strong traction to the cervix and i am just hooking the left uterocecal and giving the massage this simultaneous traction and see how beautifully this cervix is coming out of the hymen region infiltration whether to infiltrate or not it is individual call but basically there are two important functions 
which infiltrate infiltration is performing first is the hemostasis and second is the tissue supply hemostasis no doubt we have to use the vaso constrictor like adrenaline or vasopressin in very dilute quantity but as far as tissue supply if you want the proper tissue supply you have to reach to that tissue supply otherwise you infiltrate or not if you don't reach that tissue plan the planes become very messy and bloody many surgeons they follow they infiltrate in very large quantity up about 250 cc in the peri cervical area very large infiltration what happens it causes the very important point that is it replaces whole of the blood from the peri cervical area and the surgeon then the field it becomes absolutely blunt many surgeons used to view the 360 degree peri cervical incision that is the at the level of the cervical vaginal junction but i follow this practice of anterior colpotomy from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock and posterior colpotomy from 8 o'clock to 4 o'clock and what happens means laterally from 2 to 4 o'clock on left side of patient and on right side from 10 o'clock to 8 o'clock this cervix this vagina is not detached from the uterus sector and at the end of surgery what is the vault suspension you are doing that is the attachment of the vagina with the uterus sector and if you don't detach vagina from the uterus sector therefore there is no question arises to do something special for the vault suspension as far as dissection of bladder is concerned always and always you have to perform the sharp dissection with traction and counter traction this wow. is a simple video a short video of infiltration anterior colpotomy and the uh, this, uh, this bladder dissection but this video you can watch in the next video clip therefore i am uh just skipping this video right now when you do the anterior and posterior colpotomy with the dissection of the bladder away from the field the very first structure in your field that is the uterus sacral here the idea is to apply the clamp at the common origin of uterus sacral and macron rod no need to apply them separately if you apply them at the common origin the concept here is if you apply at their common origin it gives a very good integrity to that pedicle and the this stay suture of this uterus sacral it is very useful when at the time of closure of the vault if you just pull this stay suture the suturing of the vault it becomes very easy if you are doing this surgery by using this any of this energy devices like by clamp here you are you don't use the suture therefore you don't have the stay suture therefore in that time the suturing of the vault it becomes somewhat difficult because you don't have the reference with respect to three what is the three o'clock of the vault what is the nine o'clock of the vault and somewhat it becomes difficult dear friends don't waste your energy in opening the uterus because anatomically this uterus sacral and uterine they are separable therefore you don't have to open this uv fold to take the uterus sacral and uterine once you take uterus completely automatically in due course of time this you will fold it will get automatically open therefore try to open the posterior pouch but no need to open the uterus sacral fold of pastor digging of out of the uterine this is the very important way of taking the uterine you clamp it you cut it like a guillotine in single shot no problem but when you convert this surgery to the level of the fine art then you will like to do this uterine definitely in this way what happens anatomically this uterine 
they enter the uterosacral or at the level of the stomach in the right angle at the level of the stomach and without giving any branch it comes out therefore now here there are two arms first is the uh, this incoming arm and another is the outcoming arm and without giving any branch when you apply the clamp in toto what happens if you dig them out then you dig them you dig the whole of the the scores of the uterine which is intrauterine without opening the lumen and as you don't open the lumen the lumen is not open therefore even if you release the clamp there is no bleeding and you like it look the clamp is open but in spite of this open clamp there is no bleeding and because of this what happens you like it this you trying at two different places without opening therefore even if your pedicle it, it gets loose then also there is no bleeding this is the sort of a safety when you are dealing with any of the size of uterus unless uterus is of normal size and is easy is ready to come out otherwise in all other situations there is definite role of volume reduction and this volume reduction what happens it will make your surgery easy and simultaneously it will reduce the traction on the coronal structure or on the ip ligament this ip ligament it carries the sympathetic and parasympathetic particularly the sympathetic fibers that is the sympathetic supply of this uterus is c 10 11 12 and l1 and undue traction on this sympathetic supply what happens it will cause the dragging type of sensation in the post operative period ranging from 6 weeks to 6 months and it is directly proportional to the amount of the traction which you exert during the course of the day therefore if you do this the so volume reduction systematic volume reduction then this traction it gets reduced and this post operative pain is patient experiences a less dragging type of pain we will see this volume reduction in the next uh, in the next uh, presentation there are many types of volume reduction techniques i particularly i have merged two type of techniques that is the wedge incision followed by scoring this is a small video clip where anterior triangular incision posterior triangular triangular incision or the cerebral surface of the depth of about 2 to 3 mm and after that this blade is replaced by this scissor the blades are parallel to the cerebral surface this are insinuated in the substance of the uterus and to the cerebral surface and i am just applying the scissor and scissor and taking out the core by taking out the core you re, re, you reduce most of the volume of this uterus in the form of this ice cream cone and whatever remaining part of the uterus you just simply divide it in two parts it will be easy to divide at this point because you get a lot of uterus free space to divide to deal with the uterus and then directly reach the corona when you reach the corona till now all your clamps were directed from below upward but friends always in this coronal structure it will you can easily do it it will be more easier if you apply clamps from above down if you apply from below upward then this clamp will override the ovarian tissue therefore to avoid it if you apply from above downward then this coronal structure you can easily take it and ligate it when there is a mandate to remove the ovaries and tubes friends always take the round ligament and the ip ligament separate because polarity of this both the structure that is the round ligament it is directed to, uh, towards the deep inguinal vein 
and IP ligament, it is always directed towards the kidney. Therefore, the direction, the polarity of both these ligaments are different. Therefore, unless you take around ligament separately, you cannot isolate the IP ligament. Therefore, always you have to take them separately. You don't have to leave any gap between these two pedicles. Because what happens? Here, the 360 degree vision which you get in the lap surgery or the open surgery is lacking in the vagina. That is one of the drawbacks of this surgery that is the vagina surgery. Therefore, to compensate that this lack of 360 degree vision, you don't leave any visible gap between two pedicles. If you see any gap, just apply the artery process or clamp and fill that gap. I call it as a chef ladder like pull better. When you are climbing any of the staircase, there is no visible gap between these two steps. Otherwise, you cannot climb that ladder. And at the end of surgery, don't close the vault without undergoing this checklist. Never forget to take out the mop, number one. Check the bladder integrity, check the bubble integrity, and check the bleeding from the pedicle. This checklist always you have to follow. Ask your nurse that before closing the vault, just ask her or him to remind to follow this checklist. We have exploited this concept of checklist from the aviation industry, but now it is widely followed in the surgery in the OR also. Closure of the vault. When you are performing the lap surgery or abdominal hysterectomy, you close this vault with respect to the caldeca. Here you are closing it with respect to the vaginal channel or vaginal cavity. Therefore, as far as possible, always include a posterior peritoneum in the closure and try to invert the raw edge. What happens? Why to take the posterior peritoneum? Because the gap between the vaginal mucosa and the posterior peritoneum, it is very, the area is very vascular. And if you don't include the posterior peritoneum, what happens? There is, there might be chance of oozing from this area and it gives rise to the vaulting metal. If you include the posterior peritoneum, there is automatically this obliteration of this vascular area. And second thing, if you invert the raw edges, if the raw edges are facing towards the vaginal canal, then what happens? It will heal by the secondary intention. And secondary intention is always gives rise to the granulation tissue. And because of this granulation tissue, there might be the chances of post-operative bleeding from the wall or the serosanguinous discharge. Therefore, try to invert, invert this raw edges. There are certain situations where you have to perform the hysterectomy in a patient of previous severe infection. You have to take a different approach where the set space approach is very handy. We will see what is that space in detail in the next delivery. Therefore, friends, this surgery, as I have already said, that it is difficult to teach and difficult to learn. Therefore, in your, in your initial days, this the difference between the boundary between your success and failure is very thin. But if you pursue, if you go on working on this exciting thing, then really, if, if you are having the vision, if you are having the that uh, uh, that thought of overcoming this hurdle, then you can easily override this job. Friends, the nature has given the tunnel and the targeted organ, that is the uterus, is on the other side of the that tunnel. Just, just take a dive in that vaginal canal and check the uterus out. This is the era of the natural orifice surgery. Therefore, don't keep on thinking outside the ring. Enter the ring and take the uterus out. Thank you very much for your patient care.
Thank you, sir, for the very, very informative talk. I request our chairperson, respected Dr. Sunita Yadhe, ma'am, to please conclude the session. First of all, I thank you, uh, Kavita, to be here with us. She is herself. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Am I audible, Neha? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Arjun and uh, yes. yes, she is a very good friend of mine and multifaceted personality. I thank uh, Dr. Ashish Kubre, sir, and uh, first of all, uh, because he is the master craftsman of the vaginal surgery. It was very exciting, thrilling, and informative watching you doing the surgery, sir. As exciting as uh, nowadays we are seeing IPL matches 2020. So uh, whatever uh, you have shown is really an excellent job you are doing. And uh, I think not a single thing is left regarding the safety and how to do the vaginal surgery right from the beginning, uh, positioning of the patient, uh, then a massage of the uterosacrals, supports and supply of the uh, uterus, which is very important because um, these things are very important uh, to have bloodless surgery. And, uh, it is again a question of planes. So traction on the uterus as well as application of the clamps, tissue respect, and uh, volume reduction. So you have shown very well. I think uh, by seeing you, um, many, many concepts are clear of all of us, right? like uh, round ligament and uh, infundibular pelvic ligaments and checklist. And uh, most of the important thing which people may consider or not, but it is the teamwork, right from the head end anesthetist our OTs, assistants, surgeons, assistants, sisters, and everyone. So I said, uh, thank you very much. I am I cleared all the doubts because uh, vaginal surgery, it uh, seems difficult, but once your concepts are clear and uh, if you uh, learn it by heart, I think anyone can do the vaginal surgery with great efforts, of course. And uh, like you, good teacher, sir. Thank you so much. Ashish, sir? Yeah. Sir, will you be speaking on large uterus and scarred uterus right now? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, ma'am. In continuity, okay. I will. Uh... OK, sir. So there are two questions in the chat box. Can, shall I take it now or in the end? Uh, in the end. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, are you getting my screen? Yes, sir. VH and previous yeah. cesarean and fibroid. VH and previous cesarean section and fibroid. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but uh, for the convenience, I am just uh, uh, reverting the sequence that is VH in fibroid uterus or big uterus followed, uh, followed by the cardio. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, this is my uh, very nostalgic. For me, it is the iconic uh, picture that... Uh, I am demonstrating live uh, in the vaginal hysterectomy uh, in 10th Spanish Congress uh, that is uh, that was held in Spain, and Jatrakash uh, assisting on my right side, and uh, uh, this hmm. is the way this picture is very close to me. Uh, when you talk about the big uteri, two things most common two things that is the either fibroid or the adenomyosis, but uh, both the the approach is totally different in both the situations. Fibroids are more friendly. What is more important as far as fibroids are concerned? The approach, as I, I have already uh, discussed, that it is different than that of the adenomyosis. The location and the size of fibroids it matters. Fundal and posterior fibroids they behave well. Because once you remove the volume of the uterus, they directly come in your uh, visual axis. This fundal fibroids, it increases the longitudinal dimension, but uh, it can easily approach. 
the what are more difficult type of fibroids most important are the anterior fibroids because they try try to hide behind the pubic symphysis therefore in spite of removing the most of the volume of the uterus this fibroid they are not in your axis of the vision fibroid ka aisa hai ki ek bar jo aapko dikhna chalu hua wo fibroid bahar aana hi aana hai lekin wo nazar ko hi nahi aate and that is why whenever i there were situations where i have to convert from the vaginal surgery to the open surgery or lap surgery in most of the situations the fibroids were the anterior fibroids this lateral ischemic type of fibroid what happens they occupy the the space where that is why it becomes very difficult for you to apply the pedicle for the uterus and our principle is first to tackle with the support tackle with the supply and then only you start the volume reduction but it is you have to just deviate from your classical way that first you inoculate that fibroid and automatically the anatomy gets restored and you can easily apply the clamp over the uterine vessel but when you talk about adenomyosis the things are totally different here enlargement 360 degree enlargement anterior posterior transverse vertical therefore it gets it causes the reduction in the uterus free space the clamping it becomes quite difficult and second thing the tissue is not that much friendly elasticity gets reduced therefore and this taking out this adenomatic uterus it becomes more difficult the difficulty is here when you tackle the large uterus such as the distances opening of the posterior pouch that might be because of the location of the fibroid quite low in the cul-de-sac or it may be the cervical fibroid or upper displacement of bladder if the fibroid is located anteriorly it pushes the bladder upward then because of its location just now we discussed that clamping of uterine is becoming difficult the most important point i will like to draw your attention that if consider if you are dealing with the 20 week uh, big uterus and because as the volume of the uterus is already big therefore there is lot of blood consider 300 cc or 400 cc of blood in the dead space the fresh blood is coming the blood is leaving the system but big, this big volume of the sub tissue almost 300 400 cc of blood is continuously harbored in that tissue therefore when you apply the clamp over the uterine you cut the fresh blood supply but what happens these vessels are open on the specimen side and then there occur the backflow of the blood the backflow if you are doing the open surgery you apply two clamps one towards the specimen side one towards the body side and you cut between these two clamps but here the situation is different you are not applying the clamp over the specimen side it remains open therefore this black back flow is causes the collection of the blood in the operative area therefore though this blood is not from the body side but you suck it out or you apply the mop and what happens this suck blood in the canister your anesthetic they will always raise their eyebrow therefore sabse pehle unko pehle convince karna ki babu ye jo blood dikh raha hai it is not from the body side it is not actually the blood loss of the surgery it is from the specimen side unhe pehle hi clarification de dena there are many people who process because you cannot remove this big uterus without the systematic volume there to enumerate the list bisection morselation lash technique spiral incision wedge resection or myomectomy or wedge cervical wedge but if you use any of the method in isolation usually it does not work 
you have to follow the certain principle of this volume reduction and what is that geometrical basis of morselage because this principle of morselage is always used in geometry and the same principle is extrapolated in the architecture and here in surgery as surgery is the laboratory where you use all the principles of life here also the same thing you are extrapolating that principle of this morselation that is from architecture here in the surgery the basic principle is the base in two dimension it is triangle triangle in three dimension it becomes base this edges we are building this stone bridges and the stone bridges they are always the arch bridges and since centuries they are still working then what is the special thing in this arch bridge the all these arch bridges the stones they are always triangular in structure they are always triangular and if you want to dismantle this arch bridge just remove the center stone what you call the key stone automatically this immediate lateral to lateral stones it becomes the support layer or support free you can easily remove those two stones again the same thing you can continue and you can easily dismantle that thing means this thing they these all triangle stones they were interlocking to each other when you cut the big water mill all your pieces they are triangular in shape therefore when you cut this water melon in triangular shape then only you can easily cut it the same principle that here we follow that follow the wheel consider this wheel as a big fiber first remove the triangular piece all your pieces should be triangular that is it should be wedge wedge shape once this first wedge is taken out then easily you can cut the another wedge then cut the third wedge cut the fourth fourth wedge and you can easily take this wedge out and the whole of the fibroid followed by whole all of the uterus you can easily take out this is a video clip of about 8 to 9 minutes where the whole of the procedure that is right from the descent of anterior colpotomy posterior colpotomy infiltration and whole of the is here this is quite a old video but it is still relevant that is why i am showing this increased descent of followed by hooky and see how the cervix is coming out of the abdominal ridge this posterior speculum infiltration a very dilute adrenaline in large quantity of saline i had about 2 250 cc saline with 0.2 cc adrenaline the concentration is roughly 1 in 12.5 lakh 20 30 units anteriorly 20 units posteriorly just in the sub mucosa plane posteriorly and this is the posterior colpotomy it runs from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock this colpotomy in two layers first is of the mucosa and second is of the peritoneum this anterior colpotomy runs from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock traction counter traction traction by my alicet counter traction by this assistant sim speculum and because of this i am just spreading or i am just splitting the fibers and all of the dissection of this bladder is complete coming to the this uterosacral first clamp is of the uterosacral just single clamp for this uterosacral at their common origin the upper limit of this pedicle is the descending cervical you don't have to go beyond the descending cervical if possible i may try to show you the descending cervical 
if possible you can see no it was not the second clamp is of the uterine and see the uterine we are cutting in a layered manner as it is not a sing, single layer guillotine type cutting uh, in a layered manner and because of this layered manner what happens you can easily dig out the uterine you can easily dig out the uterine or pedicle time is from below upward you can go from for the above downward also but my practice is to go from the below down what happens this is more easier because you apply here the only one of the joint that is the ridge joint if you go from the above downward you have to apply your shoulder elbow as well as the ridge therefore it becomes more difficult try to follow the from below upward here the clamping of the uterine on the opposite side again the layered cutting we are taking out whole of the this covered vasculature this convolutions of the uterine also. then followed by this anterior triangular incision posterior triangular incision this systematic volume reduction always you have to follow after dealing with the uterosacral and the uterine that is after the support and supply i am trying to taking out the core out the scissors they are parallel to the cerebral surface the cone is like the shape of the ice cream cone and after removing the cone there is lot of uterus free space if you want to take the advanced clamp like in this case i am taking you can easily reach otherwise that was difficult for the surgeon to take the advanced clamp here advanced clamping on the opposite side also this is the broad ligament clamp you can take or you can avoid no problem at all and now it's time to take this uterus out therefore to take the uterus out first i have to reach the uterus i am incising the myometrium all these matrices right from the core they are always triangular in shape this is also a wedge shaped piece you will get wedge shape always remember the word wedge shaped piece by cutting this myometrium i will directly reach the fibroid and once you reach the fibroid hamesha yaad rakhna ki wo fibroid bahar aana hi aana hai whatever is the size and this white i am i have reached the fibroid just first first bar this first bar is very important first incision to the fibroid very important because after that you can easily apply the alices over it this first incision try to divide if the uterus is a, this fibroid is of 5 to 6 cm 5 to 6 cm you can easily divide it in two parts and remove it but if it is bigger in size than that of over 5 to 6 cm you have to take all these pieces they are triangular once first piece is taken another wedge is ready to take out second wedge third wedge laterally you are going lateral more lateral and by going more lateral look this is the enucleation of the fibroid now next wedge is ready to come out this is the bulldog clamp or the cat for porcelain this is very handy instrument more versatile than that of the myma screw this next wedge next wedge is there this bigger scalpel handle with bigger blade you can easily cut the fibroid with conviction next way uterus this fibroid is almost ready to come out lekin aakhri piece tak wo wedge shaped hi rehna chahiye always remember cutting the watermelon and once this fibroid big fibroid is out this is the remaining part of the uterus easily 
you can divide this remaining part and reach the cornea and by doing this what happens you reduce the traction over the cornea cornea absolutely frictionless here the clamping is from above downwards crest structure from anterior to posterior round ligament tube and the uterus ovarian ligament try to place this ligature over the either round ligament or the fallopian tube because if you apply if you place this ligature look now this ligature is over the ovarian ligament but always remember that this ovarian ligament is having the tendency to get cut through now coming to the wall closure this posterior peritoneum look posterior peritoneum you have to include in the wall closure start from the 3 o'clock position this this suture it will help in the identifying the limits of the wall this posterior peritoneum you have to always include with the imagination of this roid just inside this is the last tie it with the stress suture my assistant is always stepping up on this knot it will stabilize the knot and this surgery is over coming to the another part of this vaginal hysterectomy in a patient of previous cesarean section there is lot of evidence that it is safe and feasible procedure in patients with previous cesarean section and is always associated with a low bladder injury rate it was a misnomer that if you are dealing it in a vaginal surgery vaginal hysterectomy in patient of previous cesarean section the chances of blood the bladder injury is more that is the misnomer thing and even if you are unlucky and if you injure the bladder then after the at the end of the surgery you can easily suture that bladder from the vaginal end no need to switch the end to repair that bladder what are the problem face in case of previous first is the dysenter that as the patient has not delivered there the dysenter is less but these dysenters you can increase by doing the massage easily you can increase the dysenter then second thing the adhesions of the bladder adhesions of the bowel or this adhesion of this this uh, fundus of the uterus with the anterior abdominal wall that might pose the problem and third is the space most of the time you don't have to struggle with the, for the space but sometimes in pure patient definitely those the nightmare type of patient the special consideration is of the sex case if any one of you belongs to the category of the lap surgeon in patient of previous cesarean in section you go for the lateral window taken the same lateral window when you approach it vaginally you called is at the sex case that is the lateral window for the lap people and it is always a vaginal uh, this virgin space in spite of the number of the cesarean section our great vaginal surgeon professor series said he has described this state space these are the photograph original photographs by said sir but you may not get the exact orientation how this state space this is the diaphragmatic retraction and i will try to explain what does it mean this yellow it might be the upper part of cervix or the isthmus and this blue part is the bladder resting on the isthmus and patient is of the previous cesarean section it may be 1 2 3 4 whatever may be the number and if you divide this bladder into five equal parts then the part number 1 and part number 5 it does not take part in the adhesion formation the central part that is 2 3 4 it always takes in the adhesion formation therefore when you go in the area that is the beneath part number 1 and 5 you this area is always the virgin area and the posteriorly in this area there is the uterine vasculature that is the uterine vessel not only the vessel the uterus sacral as well as the 
these uterine vessels. Therefore, if you get the free area by dissecting it, you can easily tackle with the support and the supply on the both of the sides. अगर सपोर्ट और सप्लाई आपने ले लिया फिर बचता ही क्या है आप तो शेयर बन जाते हो देन ओनली दिस कार्ड एरिया यू डोंट हैव टू टच दिस सेंट्रल एरिया इनिशियली टैकल विद दिस सपोर्ट एंड सप्लाई एंड आफ्टर दैट आफ्टर दैट बिलो द लेवल ऑफ दिस एडिजन यू स्टार्ट टेकिंग आउट द कोर ऑफ द यूटर रिड्यूस द वॉल्यूम so that you can encircle your finger behind this fundus and divide that uterine area into two parts under vision and reach the adhesion of the bladder this i am going to present a video vaginal hysterectomy in a patient of previous three cesarean section with the anterior abdominal wall adhesion that is the fundus it adheres with the anterior abdominal wall means everything is there less space previous three cesarean infection as well as the adhesion of this fundus with the anterior abdominal wall look what happens when you place the speculum you see only the bladder and not the cervix this is one of the indicator where you can say that this it is this fundus or uterus is added with the anterior abdominal wall this anterior infiltration posterior infiltration this is our usual stage posterior pulpotomy first why posterior pulpotomy because after doing the posterior pulpotomy your posterior speculum it becomes more stable and after doing the pulpotomy just place the finger in the cul-de-sac palpate the back of the uterus you will get the idea about the for the course of the surgery and second thing after doing the colpotomy i am directly touching the posterior this uh, left uterus sacral and doing the massage direct massage for the left uterus this anterior colpotomy from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock look this advancement of this alice this is very important two alices anteriorly giving the traction my two alices giving the counter traction now advancement once that plane is obtained advancement of this this alices your your traction it should be very close to the the plane of cleavage traction is very handy anyhow i have to reach the sex how to reach the sex really this is the dissection of the blood that space is i have reached now dilating it by inserting the finger and see i can easily see the uterine vessel uterine vessels are visible these vessels always belongs to the uterus once i see the vessel i become very happy because vessels belongs to the uterus when you see the bladder uh, vessel that means the whole of the bladder is away from the area the bladder is dissected completely in this state area the dis- this suturing from below upward this is a, my principle that is going from the below upward this is the hinis type of transfixation my assistant is always taking the suture making it stable after this to check just doing the fine, fine dissection skeletonizing the vessel once vessels are bare that means the bladder is out of the area completely this is the digging out of the vessel now entry on the opposite side that is the right side of the patient and see how beautifully we are entering look the vessel is thin vessel is thin the area is totally a virgin area just inserting the finger for dilating that area and now it is being replaced by this paper i can easily apply the clamp for the uterus sacral again 
and see the upper part this is the descending cervical vessel and i have stopped and they develop the descending cervix there are finer this film g area of this bladder again i am dissecting and below the bladder i am applying the clamp only on the uterine vessel yes the whole of the bladder is out and once this support and supply now you can easily see that you can see this here in this patient when i am pulling and now there is the dimple anteriorly for the anterior abdominal wall this coring i have started below the level of the this card area means i have not touched the bladder in the central area it is still look the bladder dissection they are as it is but we have done dealt with the support we have dealt with the supply and now taking the core out almost 50 60% of the volume of the uterus is out it will increase the uterus free space uterus free lateral space now my idea is to whatever remaining part of the uterus divide it into two parts you can see this omentum in the area it is because of the this the uh, this adhesion it is in the pelvis this this dividing this remaining bladder into two parts so that i can reach the bladder adhesion area slowly and steadily i am reaching the area of the adhesion towards the bladder and under vision look cutting the uterus uterus and now uterus is over you can easily see the bladder is falling apart this is the bladder all dissection under vision dissection sorry for this jerk because of my camera person and i have reached the cornea on the opposite side the same technique we are following here it is kept this bladder is kept under traction so that i can cut the area of the this fibrous band and once i cut the fibrous band the this bladder uh, this anterior abdominal wall dimpling is automatically lost and this is the way we have taken whole of the uterus with the bladder dissection under vision this is the way i have standardized how to deal in a patient and here what i do this anterior this uv fold i take it anterior with the anterior wall and what happens because of this this any of the minor oozing from this bladder area because of this dissection that automatically it causes compression of that oozing area and you don't have to either take the suturing or you don't have to apply the bipolar leg energy process and no by problem. doing this is the different way of tackling the wall and by doing by using this way i am keeping some area of the wall open a very important this area open for the drainage purpose you can don't forget to take the mop out ठीक है अगर आप मॉप अंदर भूलते हैं तो वो चीज को सर्जन को कोई भी कोर्ट में माफी नहीं है इट इज योर निगलिजेंस एंड देर फोर डोंट फर्गेट टू टेक द मॉप आउट हेयर यू कैन सी द सेंट्रल एरिया इज ओपन एंड इट इज द एरिया फॉर द ड्रेनेज thank you very much for your patient hearing thank you very much sir the very elaborative talk uh, sunita ma'am we would uh, welcome yeah. your concluding words yeah sir uh, hats off to you dr ashish kubde i think this you have done excellent job and the 
first case was a fibroid uterus and you have shown very well the geometrical basis of morcellation and how to be safe because uh, where you have taken uh, very clear concepts you have shown basic fundamentals and very crystal clear ideas uh, regarding the debulking and removal and how to become safe while removing the fibroid then uh, regarding the second case which was may i really say hats off to you because previous three section it is very difficult to remove from vaginally but in your hands it seems like uh, a child's play because you had all safety measures and what should be considered that is very clear you have explained very well regarding the uh, five parts where the bladder comes down and lat uh, concept of lateral window and exactly the additions how they affect the anterior uh, wall of the uterus with the abdominal wall and uh, dimpling at the low, uh, at the scar of the uh, previous surgery and uh, excellent precautions which we should take or at least for each and every step what precautions and uh, uh, should be considered and for additions and dissensus everything should be kept in mind so uh, if we see that uh, whatever you have told us if we keep in mind we can do at least you can try we can try for a single or uh, two previous sections and slowly i think you are a great teacher sir you have explained very well so call regarding colpotomy uh, regarding uterine vessels and everything and uh, very good very nice presentation the surgical hand yours is very excellent sir thank you so much thank you very thank you sunita ma'am thank you yeah. akish sir now i request our second speaker dr jayaprakash patil sir to take the stage sir is a laparoscopic and pelvic surgeon he is the director of betadur advanced 3d laparoscopic center raichur mm -hmm. karnataka he is the chairman of endoscopy committee case hoga uh, he was the chairman from 20 to 22 he is senior consultant and teaching faculty at dt hospital bartala palli and operating faculty in several state and national conferences sir's areas of interest are endometriosis and fertility enhancing surgeries i welcome you sir thank you ma'am it's always pleasure to you know uh, come back to ratlam i as uh, ashish bau told it this is the third time that uh, you know we are uh, doing this webinar with you one minute can you see my share uh, my yes, screen yeah. yes sir sacrospinal yeah. yes. prospect one minute i myself is not able to see one minute something wrong one minute give me some time no problem sir Hope to have you here, sir, in uh, like in person. Probably we'll arrange some. Yes, ma'am, definitely. I I I forgot some snack which is famous for Ratlam. Uh, Ashish, uh, how you used to tell? So stew, sir, Ratlam is stew. Same yeah, name, so, sir. So so maybe next time when I come, I will love to have it. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Manisha, ma'am, Saraf, ma'am, and uh, Sunita, ma'am, and uh, maybe Kavita, ma'am, uh, if she is still here. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, I will have to run through. I think because already it's nine fifteen, and uh, because I have two more talks to go, I'll try to wind up uh, in say thirty minutes. Uh, both the talks. uh this talk actually is given by ashish sir and videos are also here so it's a kind of continuation so last time also i told this uh, sentence bol uh, bol mai raha hu lekin shabd unke hai so it's okay. like that so see the uh, he has covered the uh, non descent vaginal hysterectomy part but nahi, we most of the vaginal hysterectomy used to be only for prolapse okay and now most important aspect of Uh, vaginal surgery, especially in prolapses, is how do we give apical support? That is, you know, not removing the so-called excess vagina. I say nobody has excess vagina. Everybody has one fixed length of vagina. Nobody has extra vagina. 
Vijayana, nobody has excess Vijayana. Okay, it's one Vijayana, and if the patient is sexually active, we need to be very very careful before cutting and tearing off the, all the Vijayana and leaving her without uh, you know uh, adequate length of Vijayana. So it it becomes very important that you know we give a good apical support. So now two uh, vaginal procedures which are very important as far as apical support is concerned. One is sacral spine fixation and high uterosacral suspension. Now I give high uh, credit to uh, Ashish Kubade sir for popularizing uterosacral suspension, which has more advantages as compared to the sacral spine fixation. So I'll be going through a little faster because of constraint of time. And um, I'll be showing more of videos which are again by Ashish sir because I have not my I don't have my though I do both I do both sacral spinous fixation and also a uterosacral uh, suspension. In fact, today morning itself I operated one, but I didn't have anyone else to you know uh, videograph that uh, procedure. Yeah. So uh, I'll be showing his videos. So we'll be going through a little faster in this uh, uh, session. Okay. Let, let's go. Okay, anatomy, let's consider. See, sacrospinous ligament is basically, uh, it's an aponeurosis, which is on the uh, coccygeus muscle, which runs from the sacrum to the ischial spine, as it says, ischio, uh, you know, uh, sacro uh, spine, spinous ligament. So, now, this is basically a avascular area, if you go in right plane, okay? If you go in wrong plane, then you have a lot of vessels, especially along the rectum. It's a pararectal area which we dissect and reach this area. And if you go to lateral, then you will be encountering the pudendal vessels. Now, barring these things, it is reasonably very safe area because there has a lot of been hype created and then, you know, there's been a lot of fear put into uh, gynecologist mind that no, 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 it has to be done with a lot of care and so much of complications and all that. It is not really very difficult. You would see this in the uh, uh, video. Okay, let us not go into this. In a nutshell, just go through 2.5 centimeter from the spine towards the, uh, towards the sacrum, you will be safe enough. Okay, this is what. So there are three approaches. One is paravasical approach, which is the anterior approach, it's called. The rectovaginal space, which is the pararectal space, I would like to call, which is the middle approach or apical approach which is the most common approach okay now the posterior wall approach is not very common and very few people surgeons few surgeons use and it is used when you are combining with the perineurophy okay you are doing a recto, uh, recto seal repair you are doing perineurophy and as well you want to do sacral spinous fixation that is the approach otherwise most of the approach is the middle approach or the rectovaginal space or pararectal approach okay so this is the pararectal approach. Okay, we have finished the hysterectomy. Now you see that, uh, you know, he holds the <clears throat> posterior peritoneum, that is the pulse of Douglas peritoneum, and the vagina. Now you give little gentle traction and do a sharp dissection. I, I see some people trying to, you know, try to push uh, with their gauze or sometimes with their own finger and put the two fingers and directly start palpating for the sacrospinous ligament, which will not be seen or felt so easily. Just dissect, stay in a vascular space. When you see yellow, yellow belongs to rectum. That is a fat belongs to the rectum. Now push all the yellow towards the rectum. Okay. Now what is left is a totally avascular area. Okay. Most of the time, this area is covered with a small fascia. Now, again, you have to make a small incision and get into that area. Don't be excited that, okay, you are feeling the sacrospinous ligament and you just start clamping. Just bear the whole sacrospinous ligament with a sharp dissection and reach and beautifully dissect. Now, the kind of retractors you want to use. You see here, Ashish Bhav is using only two simple retractors. One is the single-bladed retractor and another one is a London retractor. Now it's up to you. There are the so-called Brisky Navratil retractors also, which are also good enough. I also have a pair of them. But most of the time, two single-bladed speculum are more than enough if you know how to retract well. 
okay one retractor would retract the whole part of the sigma uh, the rectum and the sigmoid towards the opposite side the other will will be little shorter one which will help the surgeon to manipulate and look for the sacrospinous ligament now as you can see he is using a special light okay which is like you know uh, these um, mining workers use we all have what on his advice we all have about uh, the the led lenser uh, it's called led lenser which is available in amazon it's about 9000 rupees or so beautiful beautiful light especially when you are doing a sacrospinous or high ultra sacral suspension because no matter what kind of light you have still you will be struggling because assistant will come in the way you know somebody will bring their hand so there is a kind of shadow whereas if you wear this light nicely you can see now he has exposed it <clears throat> and you directly take a bite into the sacrospinous ligament okay it is as simple as that like you reverse the needle from below upwards you just take a bite into the uh, uterus uh, sorry sacrospinous ligament now i usually prefer to hold with an alis and take two bites okay as a figure of eight now there are special needle carriers which are designed by you know uh, various people uh, there is one called nicols veronicus and dr pelli has also uh, uh, designed one one of his needle carriers there is one something called is mia suk so many things are there but you know believe me if you dissect well nothing is required just you, you need a 8 inch needle holder and a proline stitch now another thing which ashish bhav has taught us is he puts a so called pulley stitch okay pulley stitch is nothing simple one of the uh, thread of the two is fixed to the uter uh, vaginal wall so what happens is that part becomes fixed and by pulling the other string the whole vagina goes inside and sits onto the sacrospinous ligament now otherwise what have what used what we used to do before i met ashish bhav is like you know we used to put two alleys and put it inside and then only tighten the uh, thread whereas with the pulley stitch it's so simple you don't need anything just put a throw and push the vagina on both sides now another question many people ask is it unilateral or bilateral okay now many studies have shown that unilateral is enough but we always do me both me and ashish bhav do bilateral for two reasons number one sometimes your thread may get cut okay second thing is the axis of the vagina instead of unilateral if if it is bilateral it sits very beautifully along both sides so you have double security number one and the axis also maintains very well for these two reasons we try to do both sides okay and uh, <clears throat> another thing is uh, what about the axis of the vagina i i'll be coming to the uh, uterosacral this thing i'll be discussing about the axis of the vagina this is the the posterior approach where you do a uh, uh, recto seal repair and then dissect laterally and eventually enter the pararectal area okay this this is only employed when you are doing perineurophy or recto seal repair okay because approaching with this uh, technique is you have to go little anterior and then again dips down uh, your dissection has to dip down to reach the sacrospinous ligament so only if it has to be combined with recto seal repair i do that otherwise uh, i don't usually employ this method okay now the again the technique is similar sharp dissection reach the rectal area reach the pararectal area look for the fat that is yellow and keep the whole yellow whole fat on to the rectum fat belongs to the rectum as kuntabika sir keeps telling always fat belongs to the organ whether you are dissecting the um, uh, scar due tray for for bladder or for the rectum always fat belong to the organ so if you stay below the fat if you stay below the fat plane you are most of the time you are safe as you can see video stopped running for some reason i'm sorry about that 
So as you can see here, do you see my cursor? Now you do you are seeing my cursor? Yeah. So what happens is this is the fat. Now in this area you enter and then you 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 have already seen what he has shown in the first video. Okay. So this is the posterior approach. We usually don't do anterior approach because it doesn't make any sense because you go anterior and eventually dip down to the uh, the parietal space. But in a rare situation you may have to approach anteriorly. Okay. Now complications of course there are complications as i said if you are not in the right plane you may have a lot of bleeding and you may have neurological injuries if you happen to uh, uh, injure the pudendal nerve most of the time you may have a dragging pain onto the buttocks if it is a neuropraxia but most of the time they do settle with uh, pregabalin and uh, uh, methylcobalamine uh, management rectal injury is a real issue I myself, in the early uh, days of my, you know, uh, learning curve, I had injured twice. But then if you identify then and there itself, suture it well, most of the time you will get it away. Let us not go into this. Let us not go into this. Okay. Now, this is my uh, favorite, the high uterosacral suspension. Now, I think it was almost eight years or nine years back, me and Ashish Bhav, uh, we went to uh, Chennai to attend Dr. Rajamaheshwari Madam's uh, conference where Dr. Bobby Shal uh, demonstrated the high uterosacral suspension. Now, what happened, uh, unfortunately, during the conference was that, you know, Bob Shell himself had a uretric injury. Okay, this is on the in the conference. Now, we thought, okay, this man is a, you know, is a legend in, 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 in one of the very earliest people to uh propose and demonstrate the uterocycle uh, application ligation and if he can have complication then this is not my piece of cake so i did not even uh bother to uh, learn or practice the uterocycle ligation but ashish bau persisted he developed his own method where you can almost you know uterocycle uh, sorry uretric injury has become nearly zero okay I will demonstrate in the video. Okay. So he looks actively for the uterosacral. Now, Bob Shell, what he used to do was you put your two hands on the rectum and just palpate on both sides of the rectum. That will be the uterosacral. Now, just lateral to the uterosacral itself is a ureter. Now, there is hardly any space. Unless you bring the uterosacral out from the ureteric area you are bound to have complication that is the ureteric injury. Now, we used to routinely do a cystoscopy to see whether there is a jetting. Now, you see what we do basically now is we put a clamp onto the uterosacral ligament, uh, sorry, the, where the uterosacral pedicle and keep a gentle traction towards us. Now, what that does is it makes the uterosacral taut. Now, I do little different from Ashish Bhav. I hold partially the uterosacral, bring medially, and again hold with another alice, only 50%. Then leave the first one, make sure that this is the uterosacral which I am holding, and then only I apply another alice. Okay? It's a two-step technique, but if you are sure that it is a uterosacral. You can hold uh, all, all together at, at, at one go. Now, me and Ashish Bhav have demonstrated the ureter by vaginally. You can see ureter when you lateralize, sorry, when you medialize the uterosacral, bring the uterosacral to medially. You can actually see the peristalsis of the ureter. So, you can see the ureter. You don't have to dissect. Many people believed that, no, this is a very dangerous procedure. So, you know, Dr. Ramesh from Bangalore, he once, you know, he proposed that we, ha we have to do a hybrid method where we do laparoscopically, you dissect, dissect the uterosacral away from the, uh, sorry, ureter away from the uterosacral and come back vaginally, then do the high uterosacral application. Then I told him, sir, we can demonstrate the uterus, uh, sorry, ureter through vaginally. You can, you can see here, just I will pause it for a minute. So, you can see he is holding the uterosacral which has become taut completely from the 
the pedicle to the that is a vaginal attachment pedicle to the highest point that is almost at the uh, S2 S3. Okay, now you take running sutures by proline zero or proline number one. It's your choice. Now take a bite only fifty percent of the uterus. Don't take the whole thing because you may get into the ureter. You may you may not even realize if you partially cut the ureter. Uh, with your needle, that may also be not visible. So what you do is you take only fifty percent. You are make sure. So now you can see the whole. You have taken multiple bites onto the uterosacral, and while coming back, usually I take bites into the uh, <clears throat> uh, pouch of Douglas. By which what it does is instead of Macaulay's, which does transverse opposition of the uh, pouch of Douglas, it does a vertical opposition of the uh, uterosacral. And it it takes the whole vagina with the pouch of Douglas to the highest point available. So you up you approximate the cul de sac, and you also plicate the uterosacrals. Now one thing which Macaulay does, which doesn't happen in hyoterosacral ligament, is it does not bring the both the uterosacrals together, which is absolutely okay because in any case in a, in 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 a non-prolapse situation, also two uterus sacrals are different. We have not anyway combined them, and nature has not combined anyway. But only thing is, you don't want any space between the two uterus sacrals because you know it. Otherwise, it will form a niche where you can have an entrocele. Now that is that purpose is served by the bites onto the pouch of Douglas, vertical bites, multiple bites, and then eventually when we close the whole uterus sacral. Uh, the whole vagina goes up beautifully. We get almost length of seven centimeters. Believe me. And when we finish, it looks as if okay, nothing much has been done. But after two months, if you see, uh, I have followed up my own patients with a wonderful results. Okay. Now coming back to the advantages. What are the advantages of high uterosacral suspension over the? Uh, Uh, sacrospinous uh, ligament fixation. Now, just imagine when you, when in erect position, the utero, uh, the sacrospinous ligament is at a lower level that is at the posterior. Okay. Now, the vagina, vagina axis, the natural vagina axis is towards the sacrum. Okay, towards the sacrum, whereas the sacrospinous ligament is on the downward side. Now, what when we put a sacrospinous ligament fixation, the vagina automatically becomes down posteriorly. This is not a big deal. This is not a big problem. I, I never had any patient who was coming back and telling that okay, we have a coital problem or we have any problem or perhaps nothing. It doesn't make any sense as 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 far as this. But it exposes the occult prolapse of anterior compartment. This makes a lot of pressure on the anterior compartment. If there is a occult cystocele which you are not uh, bothered to switch or I mean to repair. That puts a lot of pressure onto the anterior compartment. The cystocele which was not there or which was in a very mild form will become prominent after you change the axis. This is the problem. Okay, this is the problem. That is why, whereas in uterosacral application, the whole axis is along the natural uh, axis that is towards the sacral promontory, so you don't have any pressure, undue pressure on, on either. The anterior compartment or the posterior compartment. Okay, if there is anterior posterior compartment, you are definitely you have to correct even with the uterosacral plication. I am not telling that you don't have to, but the thing is, the occult cystocele or occult rectocele will not become the frank cystocele or rectocele with uh, the uterosacral uh, plication. That is the beauty. Now you can see here once it is done, once we tie. The vagina, whole vagina, goes up beautifully. Now, I I started replicating this procedure in a small uterine prolapses where they want to preserve the uterus. Okay. Now, what I do? I go laparoscopically. I plicate the both uterus sacrals laparoscopically because I don't have to use a mesh. That is a beauty. If it is just first degree, second degree prolapse, some young women like 30, 32, they say that no, I don't want to remove the uterus. Obviously, you should not remove uterus at this age. 
just for the prolapse. So what is the best method? Should I do sacro, uh, sacro, uh, sacro hystropexy or should I do uh, other procedures, sling procedures? I found in few cases, of course, I've done only hardly four or five, you know, doing a uh, uterosacral plication laparoscopically gives equally good results. And in young patients where uterosacral is still healthy, very nice, uh, you can utilize uh, this this natural, uh, you know, uh, ligament. Okay. So, what are the five surgical pearl, pearls? Okay. Delineate the uterosacral separately, actively. Like, you know, what I, uh, what I showed, just put a, a, a clamp, pull it, make it taut, hold with an alice and delete it. Now, remain medial side of the uterosacral and don't use full thickness. I think I have already covered. Okay. Pass the suture through durable tissue so that when traction is placed, there is a minimum moment of the peritoneum. What I, what, what I basically meant uh, by this statement is, if you take through and through of the peritoneum, when you pull it, the peritoneum may pull the ureter towards it. Okay. If you take onto the uterosacral alone, only uterosacral will come, not the ureter. Okay. Now, at the end, you pass through the full thickness of the post-vaginal wall and then push the uh, knot. It will go up nicely and then uh, your job is done. Now, sometimes, especially if you are dealing with a uh, vault prolapse, if they have very bad additions, it may not be easy to open the pouch of the glass. Okay, peritoneum, I meant mean to say peritoneum. Sometimes it happens. So in such cases, you have to have a backup plan of going for a SSR. Or in early part of my, uh, you know, uh, render with uh, uterocycle application, I was struggling to find a uterocycle. I used to say, okay, okay, this is attenuated. So it, is, it was my inexperience rather than the attenuated uterocycles, which was making it difficult for me to do high uterocycle uh, application. So you need to have a backup plan of sacrospinous fixation. Okay, I've already told the uh, advantages. So what any pelvic organ prolapse, whether it is a cystocele, a rectocele, or uh, any laparoscopy procedure, whatever you want to do pelvic, pelvic floor repair, you need to have, you have to give a woman a caliber. You cannot like, you know, uh, make the whole vagina small and then say that uh, everything is done. Uh, Dr. Ajay, uh, Ajay Rane from Australia is, is actually an Indian. Uh, it seems he said uh, to Ashish Kubde, if you do, if you remove all the vagina, of course, nothing will come out, but nothing will go in as well. That means that, you know, she cannot have a sexual life. So the access that is, I, I, I was discussing SS service with uterosacral and the length of the vagina and the functionality basically functionality means a sexual function so all these things we need to uh, consider of any pelvic pro, uh, pelvic organ prolapse so you high uterosacral application does satisfy all these criteria i think i have covered this yeah the only disadvantage is if you are not very well experienced uh, if you don't delineate the ureters, you may end up with a ureteric injury. That should be never had. But then with Ashish Bhav's method, it is very easy, very uh, safe. But you need to uh, be vigilant about that. Okay. So this is the conclusion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So uh, you'll continue with the second talk? Yes, ma'am. I can continue. Give me one minute, I'll finish off because we are running yes. time, uh, we're running out of time. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, another uh, thing I want to tell. All these which videos which I am going to show, except the last one which I have borrowed from uh, my guru, Dr. Manolo Fial, uh, are there in YouTube, my YouTube channel. So you don't have to worry if I go through fast. You can go back to YouTube and watch them. Okay. So basically, this talk I want to dedicate to Kavita Bapat, madam. Okay. Uh, ma'am, are you still there? I don't know if she's still there. Doesn't ma matter. Ma'am, was there 15 minutes back. 
I'm yeah it doesn't sure. matter when baby she is she is busy it doesn't matter now what yes, happened was she was, she was doing she was doing a uh, vaginal surgery course okay with uh, sony madam and uh, they were the moderators it is conducted by foxy and uh, she asked me to speak on uh, vaginal surgeries uh, vaginal surgeries on cer- cervix okay this was our topic now i thought like how many things we can do uh, on the cervix alone maybe cerclage maybe leap you know things like that like you know sperm dub suture wagera wagera then i asked her madam i will talk on vaginal surgeries which are non not hysterectomies okay then she agreed so i prepared that talk for her with all leap everything but then i have modified that talk so this will be like you know think beyond ndbh what else we can do by vaginal route which are traditionally done by abdominal route that is my talk okay so if there is a will there is a way okay now most of our non gynec colleagues thinks this okay wo kya karte hain gynecologist dnc karte hain delivery karte hain cesarean karte hain aur bade bade ghar bana dete hain okay little jealous statement from them but then but then this is what it used to be okay it used to be maybe in the periphery you know several years back but you know stalwarts like shirodkar uh, dr sirish sheet purandre they brought so much glory so much uh, competence to the uh, fellow gynecologists and they actually made the branch so rich and they popularized the vaginal hysterectomy not only in india but you know in several countries made it so standardized dr sirish sets work on vaginal surgeries i think immense we need to be thinking about these stalwarts every day okay let us let us just move through okay a skillful gynecologist should i mean he is expected to perform most surgeries you know in a restrained environment that is the space available okay that is what is now we have been do- it's not that we have we were not doing many things like we, we have been doing tots we have been doing complete perineal tears third classes so many so many things we were leap and so many things we were doing okay it's not that we were not doing now what are the scope what we can do vaginally which are conventionally done by laparoscopy or abdominal surgery like isthmoseal repair now isthmoseal has become kind of now a new sensation okay you have because the increasing section rate bringing women with either menstrual complaints or with secondary infertility where you are finding more and more isthmoseal especially trained sonologists are reporting the more and more isthmoseal now that needs correction it is traditionally was popularized by laparoscopy i'll be showing the isthmoseal repair now we we were we are doing vvf repair unfortunately i could not uh, fetch the video which i'll be posting in youtube very soon now cesarean scar pregnancy that is csp evacuation we can do vaginal uh, myomectomy for large cervical fibroids i'll be showing the video soon now with v notes now somebody was putting in the chat box what are the advantages of v notes now for hysterectomy alone okay i was speaking with suresh naval who is kind of you know uh is a sensation uh for as far as v notes is concerned in india i was talking to v- uh, suesh he for most of the hysterectomy why do we need v notes but then we need to master v notes for other procedures like you know you can now dr ramesh has demonstrated a v notes cholecystectomy surgeons were not willing to do appendectomy ectopic maybe torsions so many things adnexal pathologies so we can do vaginally if we develop the skills of we not so there is a scope to learn newer things okay so this is what i want to highlight in this talk hello friends in this small video i would discuss the isthmoseal repair by vaginal route okay see now you see the entricalpotomy is similar okay we have gone and most of the time most of the time you don't have i mean in any case you don't have to open the anterior pouch it is the isthmoseal is well below the anterior pouch now 
like we open the enter pouch for doing hysterectomy you can most of the time if the difference is significant you can always see the scar defect now if you cannot see scar defect let us presume if the defect is very small what i usually do is i will pass a long artery forceps through the cervix and make sure that the defect is well marginalized and all you have to do is just remove the uh thin out edges and suture the defect it's all this, this is all it takes nothing great science in this and you don't need i nowadays i have stopped doing uh, uh, laparoscopic uh, repair for isthmocele last probably 15 20 cases of isthmocele are by vaginal route now here i am using vicryl but we can also use vlog for a consistent approximation of the uh, uh, edges raw edges now only two things in, very important in this one is to identify the defect properly and then make the edges raw and suture it well it's all it takes and you can cross check immediately after uh, doing isthmocel repair whether you have done a proper repair or not by doing a hysteroscopy or you can call her after two months for uh, follow up of the uh, follow up scan you don't have to do a, a hysteroscopy in any case so it's very simple the full video is available on youtube so you can please go through okay this is the cesarean scar pregnancy okay <clears throat> similar technique sorry there is some problem with the video which is running very slow similar technique to isthmocel repair similar technique you inject the vasopressin instead of uh, selen adrenaline because the tissues are very vascular okay now i also inject diluted vasopressin at 4 o'clock and 8 o'clock of the cervix now because <clears throat> you don't want a torsion torrential bleeding to come to you now do a enter calpotomy push the cervix up uh, push the enter uh, uh, vagina up and you will see bluish thing which is nothing but a scar pregnancy okay now just open it up evacuate the whole products of conception and here unlike isthmocel repair the edges may not be readily approachable so what you have to do is be ready with multiple alleys and if there are any bleeders there just catch hold of them make sure that you trim the thinned out margins and suture with a vlock now here i always use vlock because the the margins are always not very clear and not very uh, thin and not very thick so i want to have a proper approximation of the edges and i have done so far five or six cesarean scar pregnancies with very good results you don't have to go laparoscopically actually i feel cesarean scar pregnancy laparoscopically is more cumbersome why do i say that is i myself is a laparoscopy surgeon because you have to dissect the bl uh, the bladder push it completely down and cut down the blood supply either with a temporary uterine artery ligation or with a clips or sometimes even you uh, you know cauterize the uterus uh, uterine arteries and then only you evacuate otherwise it's very difficult to control the bleeding laparoscopically whereas in vaginal route you have everything under your uh, nose you just have to hold with an alleys and the bleeding stops and you just suture it the bleeding completely ceases okay and in my short experience of 5 6 cases i find the bleeding is lesser with vaginal route and it is faster to do and as you can expect it is cost effective and also it you know uh, it also causes lesser hemorrhage and early recovery okay so i am here i you can see i am removing the edges and just like isthmocel i repair this is in scar pregnant i mean i am repairing the defect now this is a myomectomy okay now again very simple uh, dr ashish kubde showed uh, nicely you know uh, how to debulk them here you can see you can you cannot see any cervix the whole thing is filled up with a myoma you don't bother just go in a right plane and inject lot of diluted vasopressin okay 
now we usually put 20 international units of vasopressin in 200 ml and inject maybe around 100 ml that is that will be like giving 10 international units like you do laparoscopically now it's very simple put a nick hold with an alice and dissect the area of the myoma bed you will be in a right plane just keep morselating and the whole myoma comes out even the biggest of the biggest myoma will yield nicely okay you can see here i can't see this where the cervix is i don't even bother where it is as long as you have a bosselation see i hold the vagina now that's it do a proper dissection go into the myoma bed put your finger if re if required enucleate it completely and just keep morselating the whole thing will come out okay i'll just fast forward this sorry see i have enucleated it now i am putting the speculum into the myoma bed okay so you know you don't have to worry about the injury to other 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 uh, parts so hold with a bulldog or uh, uh, myoma screw or uh, cat spa which ashish bhav showed so it starts coming out nicely okay so just keep morselating this was not very big maybe around 5 centimeters or so but even the biggest of myomas can be delivered very easily you don't have to do laparoscopy for this here you don't even have to worry about the ureter because you are staying well within the myoma bed okay and suturing is also very fast and uh, you know definitely it's more cost effective and early recovery that is a bladder i am i am showing that is a bladder so just have to pull out and suture okay Again, this video is available on YouTube, so I'll just run through. Now, this is a emergency circlage. <clears throat> now, the modified Shirodkar or what Ashish Bhav would like to call it as a uh, vaginal Bensendurfi. Bensendurfi, you, you are aware it's an abdominal circlage. Now, by opening the pouch of Douglas and using a special needle that is a W22, uh, Marceline tape, we put the, uh, the uh, circlage at a very high level, that is almost at a isthmic level. Now, I, as I said, I also do a lot of laparoscopies. My, my funda is very simple. If it is interval circlage, I prefer to do a laparoscopy because I also want to see inside the abdomen if there is anything else. But in all gravid uteri, whether if whenever patient requires high circlage, even if it is an emergency circlage, I always do a vaginal procedure, which is modified Shirodkar or the vaginal Bensendurfi, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Now the technique is simple. Like you start with a vaginal hysterectomy, you do anterior and posterior colpotomy, push the bladder up, open the pouch of Douglas and pass the special needle from below up above downwards you can see you get almost 3.5 to 4 centimeter of length of cervix sorry i'm sorry i sure i did not show. okay now this is what it is now we pass usually <clears throat> we can if you want to have a vaginal delivery we can do a <coughs> colpotomy and remove the uh, tape but most of the time we do go for elective c-section actually the patient which i'm showing uh, on, in this video he is scheduled for elective c-section i think on uh, 20th or so she came with a bulging membrane it was a precious pregnancy ivf conception and the consultant who referred me uh, saying that there is already, already funneling what can we do we said we can always do a, a vaginal circlage. And our experience with vaginal circlage has been really, really satisfying. Whether for uh, em, as an emergency procedure or as an elective procedure, uh, especially in cases where either there is a Muller anomaly or there is a failed uh, McDonald's. Our experience has been actually very great. Okay, This whole video is there on YouTube, so I'll just go through. This is interesting. This is called the Richardson procedure. 
this I have, this video i have borrowed from my pelvic floor guru dr manolo frial from spain so he is very fond of doing this uh, richardson procedure what is this this is for a prolapse where you want to keep the uterus okay so this is a vaginal procedure where you don't amputate any cervix you don't do any father like father gill like procedure basically he fixes the uterosacral ligament to the sacrospinous ligament it's as simple as that like you would have done a sacrospinous fixation to wall prolapse now i i was just mentioning about the nicols vernicus instrument this is nicols vernicus is very expensive actually it's almost 1 lakh rupees we struggled to get it uh, 10 years back because we saw manolo doing we thought it is required but after meeting ashish kumar sir we thought we have wasted 1 lakh rupees those days okay so this is nicols vernicus here he is identifying the uterosacral and uh, sorry sacrospinous ligament on both sides taking a bite onto that and fix it to the uterosacral now just a disclaimer though it's a very nice procedure and i have also uh, done few cases in a small prolapses where it is a first degree or second degree this works well but for large prolapses sometimes uh, like you know you have a, a third degree prolapse or you know very very uh, the where the cervix is totally out of the vagina completely like 3 4 cm usually this has a higher failure rate so we need to choose wisely uh, between laparoscopy and vaginal procedures uh, i would like to say they are not competitive with each other they are complementary to each other both laparoscopy and vaginal surgery have to be complementary because i do both i do both laparoscopy hysterectomy yeah. i do vaginal hysterectomy i do laparoscopy procedures i do vaginal procedures so whichever is best suited for the patient on that day according to your skills according to the patient needs we need to choose them okay this is also one of the procedures in my armamentarium though i rarely do it nowadays but then this is still a useful procedure so this is my last slide so basically you need to experiment yourself you need to dare yourself you know to take little risk of course not at the cost of patient safety anymore you need to keep thinking uh, uh, differently to to achieve something different so thank you very much thanks for this opportunity once again aratlam society i hope i have stuck to my time already it's 10 o'clock yeah. thank you very no much problem. sir thanks for taking all the pain and staying here with us till 10 o'clock uh, i request sunita ma'am to please yeah. conclude the talk uh, thank you very much dr jayaprakash young energetic surgeon and uh, you have shown us lot of surgeries which are done by vaginal route not only ndvh and uh, vaginal hysterectomy for prolapse and there is a big list which you have shown but uh, what i want to say regarding uh, apical suspension sacrospinous fixation and uh, because this both surgeries we always think that uh, it is very difficult but as the cases you have shown you have done it really with precision and uh, your art you have shown here and here we i want to uh, say only two point that uh, bilateral fixation as you have shown and that <clears throat> maintains the axis of the vagina functional axis, uh, functioning of the vagina is also very important so most of the times many times patient come after uh, vaginal or abdominal hysterectomy and these type of procedures they are really rewarding and uh, like you surgeons mai to kahungi ki guru aur chela uh, dr ashish kubde and uh, dr patil aaj dono ne hum hamare liye bahut pist di hai bahut achhi surgeries di hain thank you madam jo bhi dikha hai and fundamental fundamentals uh, means your concepts are really crystal clear you have shown everything very nicely and without mess the surgery is really an art what i feel and it is god gift also and with lot of hum bolte na khub mehnat karte hain jab kisi cheez tak pahunchte hain hum and jab hum dekh 
सकते हैं ये सर्जरी वो मेहनत तो किसी को नहीं दिखती है बट योर सर्जरी के लिए वहां निकलता है अप्रिशिएट यू एंड हमें ताली बजाना चाहिए आपके लिए नेक्स्ट यूट्रोसाइकल सस्पेंशन that is also very important and as you have shown very nicely because the patients come and the satisfaction they get after this surgery is uh, very, very good then a few surgeries i have to mention that uh, scar pregnancy uh, isthmo seal repair i think many people may not be uh, knowing about this but you have shown a very nice presentation cervical uh, myomectomy as well as cervical circlage and richardson obturation operation i have seen uh, dr v n purandar a long back in uh, 91 92 doing uh, this type of circlage high circlage with marcelin tape and uh, i was fortunate to see dr v uh, n purandar operating at even uh, when we were uh, doing our pg in our medical college and i had been there but that was last in 90s he was doing very uh, less surgeries at that time but you both surgeons are a par excellence and uh, i remember them and uh, you have shown very good surgeries with basic fundamentals everything is very much clear so i think uh, you have made the, as the, the as today's our uh, uh, vaginal hysterectomy made it easy but you have made the surgery very easy and simple and i suppose i feel that over the time vaginal surgery will take over the major bulk of hysterectomy and like in our country laparoscopy has definitely you have rightly said that they they are complementary to each other but uh, i have seen i work in uh, tribal areas i see the patient they don't have that much of money so vaginal hysterectomy has definite place in our country and most of the people they are ready if we explain them so i think today our society is very thankful to both of you and uh, we'll go with a message that <clears throat> vaginal surgeries can be done by everyone by each and every member of our society if we give little more attention if we exert and with all these fundamentals what uh, dr ashish kubde has uh, depicted in his uh, presentation and you have shown practically the art of surgery both of you have done excellent job and uh, i thank you for taking trouble and still at 10 10 10 pm everyone is there most of the uh, people are there and uh, that is the success of our uh, uh, present your presentation that everyone is still there and uh, watching you thank you so much sir and thank, thank you madam. manisha and neha giving me the opportunity to chair the session and now i wish both of you will again come in our society and probably for the live surgery i hope for that wish you all sure. the best and thank i thank everyone my uh, fellow members uh, our speakers kavita and uh, our secretary president manisha neha and my friends thank you so much for this opportunity and uh, i say good night to all of you thank you so much thank you ma'am thank you thank you ma'am ma uh, dr ashish sir uh, you wanted to say something ashish sir i think so you need to unmute un i think you need to unmute sir ashish sir you need to unmute yourself No, sir. We cannot hear you. No. Yes, now we can, sir. Hello. हाँ अभी आ रहा है. हाँ आ रहा है, sir. हाँ ठीक. हाँ मैम ने गुरु और चेला की जोड़ी बोली, but for me he is uh, the Lakshman for me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, ma'am. Thanks for Thank the. Thank you. Muhammad Thank you, doctor. I know. That's why I said. And sir, you are guru for all of us also. Yes. 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 <laughs> thank you dr ashish and dr jayprakash thank you madam full, thank you full justice to the topic vaginal surgery is made easy
Thank you, madam. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, Ratlam Society, for uh, this Thank opportunity. You. And next Thank time, you. I'm physically bula. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, sir, definitely <laughs> physically bula. I'm going to. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank Good night, ma'am. Good night. Thank you, madam. Thank you. 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 Bye. Bye, ma'am. Good night.